Hello everyone. We are going to analyze the data of the experiment in this tutorial. Therefore, we are going to set up the experiment. I have opened here the basis model. I have included the access interface so that we have immediately the, the results in the Excel file. Now we are going to set up the parameter variation. So what I'm going to change is the processing time. I change it to range. I want to have the minimum value defined to 5 minutes in the processing time, in the average processing time, and the maximum level is 9.9 .9 minutes. The step size is 0 0.1 minute. Then we make sure that we run the simulation run for 6,000 minutes. And we just have a look to the randomness. We have installed the custom generator based on our replications because we are using 10 replications here. If you want to have more or less, then you can change this number here. And in the end, we are going to check that we don't allow parallel evaluations on our cores of the CPU. We just want to have one simulation run after the other. Once we have done that, we check the Excel interface. So my Excel file is B1 results basis model. It's green, so this file is active. So now we run the experiment, the parameter variation. The applet is generated and we are going to run it. So now we have to wait for the end. Here we can see our iterations and the replications. We can see that we are almost done. The parameter processing time is changing to 8, 8, 1, 2, 3. We have to wait until the parameter goes up to 9.9. .9. Here you can see that we reach our target now. So the experiment is finished so far. We stop the experiment, we close the applet and now we are going to open the Excel file. So now this is the Excel file. We can see our simulation results. In total we should have 500 simulation runs if we go down to the very end. You see we have 502 rows minus the two header rows results in two in 500 simulation runs. And what we're going to observe now are the averages over each iteration. Here we have 10 replications for example and we are interested in the key figures over those 10 replications since we have a stochastic system. We can see that for example in our key figures the average width for example is for each single simulation run different. And now we are using pivot tables to analyze this bunch of data. Therefore we select all results, all 500 rows, and then we go to insert and then we select pivot table. Yes, the selected table or range. We have already selected that one. We wanted to have the new pivot table in the new worksheet. We say yes. And now we have the possibility to arrange our data. Here on the right hand corner you find all the necessary items, the key figures we have measured 
and and also the parameters um, for defining our experiment. We have changed the parameter processing time so we are going to give it in rows and here on the left hand side we can see all conducted iterations and now we are interested in for example the average VIP. Here we find the VIP mean and we put it into values. The standard configuration is that um, the pivot table returns here the sum but we would like to have the average so we go to the drop and down menu and we change the value field settings and we select the average. Now we know that the average VIP for a processing time of 5 minutes on average is 0 0.9456. We can also include the standard duration. Here is the standard deviation, so that should become the standard deviation, so we change it in the value field settings to the standard deviation. And then we can check if all replications have uh, transferred to the Excel file, so we again take the with mean and then we are interested in the numbers so that means we are going to count it and here we can see um, those items are the basis for calculating confidence intervals which we are now going to do to analyze this big data bunch so a little hit, hint um, because the pivot table has the problem that we could only hardly use references for that. So we are going to copy the whole table. And we are just going to insert the values. So and now we can start calculating the confidence interval by the function confidence.t then we are taking the confidence interval of the student distribution so we need the alpha we assume in this case that um, the confidence level is 95% so our alpha is 0 0.0, .0. Five. The standard deviation is calculated here and the size, the sample size is 10. So now we have calculated the confidence interval for the first iteration. By just clicking a double click here, we are now calculating all remaining confidence intervals for the remaining iterations. So we name this row with confidence interval. Now we're going to visualize our results. So we select the rows for the iteration and the corresponding average width. We select them and now we're going to insert a chart more specific and x by scatter so we can see here the changes in the processing time and we can see how the average whip is changing and now we can include the confidence interval we have calculated previously to see if the whip change is significant for that, we click here on Add Charts Element. We select 
arrow bars and we are going for more arrow bar options and what we are going to select in the arrow bar options is we define it to custom the error amount and we are going to specify the value the positive error value corresponds to the confidence interval as well as the negative error value once you have to select them you can click on ok and here happens a little axle arrow so we are going to delete the horizontal lines then we can enlarge the chart and we are done with the visualization of the confidence interval and we can see that especially in the high utilization cases an overlap of the confidence interval is existing.